Hey, and welcome to Beer Christianity. Uh, my name is John T, and I will be your host for this uh, episode, episode one of Beer Christianity. Well, that needs some explanation, but before that, I need to have a sip of this, which is mm, Tusker, Kenya's finest uh, lager, possibly my favorite beer in the world. Um, this is not one of those beer podcasts that gets super nerdy about beer because I don't know enough, and you know, generally speaking, doesn't all beer taste the same? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I know that's not true. Just a little joke. It's not whiskey. Uh, but if you do want to complain uh, or send any kind of feedback, emails, uh, the email to send it to is because we're going to kick it old school with this podcast. Um, the email to send it to is beerchristianity at yahoo.co.uk. That's right. Uh, you can write to us there. And when I say us, I mean, there's going to be a bunch of people doing this. It won't just be me. This episode is episode one, but we technically did do an episode literally nine years ago um, in 2011. Maybe that's eight years ago. Anyway, uh, me and a couple of friends, we got together in a pub uh, slash a bar in the Reading International Solidarity Center. Um, we got a few hundred listens on that. We played a lot of copyrighted music and, you know, just got nervous slash old slash busy and uh, didn't finish it up. So this is a kind of reboot of that podcast. Uh, its main purpose was to kind of find a use of some of the interviews that I was doing um, with various Christian musicians and also to introduce people to Christian alternative music that I liked because it doesn't tend to get that much of an airing and that's a shame. I, I, I like me some worship music, but I don't love um, all of that. I'm more of a kind of goth industrial kind of boy at heart and I do love me some grunge and I do love me some punk and ska and all sorts of interesting synthy stuff and EBM and uh, yeah industrial and all that. So um, that's what that was about. It's not so much going to be about this unless we can find bands who are willing to let us use their um, music on our show and kind of introduce them and I have one lined up for a future interview uh, and a future episode of this already, so I'm going to be doing that. But um, generally speaking, this podcast is going to be all about uh, having a few drinks and talking about stuff that relates to faith. Some of that's going to feel really obvious. It's going to feel um, like episode two, which is our, our real episode one. And I have to warn you in advance, the production values are ropey, but the bants is is strong with us. It's uh, a friend of mine, uh, Laura and myself, uh, sitting in a pub in Didcot, which is uh, the most average town in Britain. So you've got to kind of go with that and feel like that's got to mean something. Um, talking about Greenbelt Festival, which is a Christian festival, but it's kind of like, this is kind of that kind of podcast, really. It's a Christian festival, but it doesn't just, you know, focus on Christian stuff. It's not just worship. And it's really concerned with issues of justice, issues of politics, issues of where the church and the people of God should be, and taking it away from that kind of negative space that perhaps uh, a lot of people have been experiencing the church in. Um, I'm not talking about uh, going full identity politics. Um, I think that identity politics has a lot to teach us, um, and I think that it will make mistakes like any other movement, but I think the, the problem with the world currently is not too much identity politics. I think the problem with the world currently is that it's slipping into fascism, and the church seems either not to care or to be so caught up in kind of the capitalist mindset that uh, we don't really pay that much attention. It's not going to be hating on the church either, because I love the church. I also love tradition. I also love um, evangelical Protestantism. I think there's a lot to offer for it. I myself am a recovering fundamentalist, and I hold some of that stuff still dear. Um, not the reaction to a society that is changing, that makes us into weird, terrified people who try to draw hard lines, but I understand the first half of life. Um, and I think it's important so we will not be throwing the baby out with the bathwater. We will also not be enforcing hard doctrinal lines here. I'm going to disagree with some of my guests. I'm going to disagree with some of my co-presenters, I imagine. Uh, I don't want to push some kind of single dogma. What I want to push is a version of Christianity that is... Uh, no, it's not even a version of Christianity. I want to push some Christians. I don't want to push anything, man. Why do you have to push everything all the time? I don't want to push anything. What I want to do is 
to make use of some of the interviews that I'm doing with people, generally speaking for my day job and just as a hangover from when I used to do op-ed and review writing for the Baptist Times and for Christianity Magazine and for Christian Today and a bunch of other Christian media in the UK. And I got to interview a bunch of cool musicians. If I can find some of those um, interviews, I'll play those again. Uh, and also interesting thinkers, you know, uh, politicians, philosophers, theologians, uh, churchmen and women, uh, people from the fringes of it, from, um, uh, you know, kind of liberal reformers through to the LGBT kind of campaigning community. Um, so, yeah, we'll be doing a bunch of those kind of interviews, hopefully having chats, not um, as I'm currently sitting in a study in uh, my house. Uh, drinking beer. I should open another one as well. I'll be honest, I recorded that opening the Tusca before I started because I felt like I, I had to get lick it up before I did that. Uh, so now I'm opening, hey, let's not get nerdy about the beer, but let's also say I'm opening an, a Freak Ale Works Phantom Pale Ale, um, which is one of those ones that you can buy at LD. Is that is that offensive to beer people? I don't really know. Do you know LD, the supermarket is kind of like a budget supermarket in the UK. Anyway, they always have, you know, interesting American craft beers and pale ales and all that kind of stuff. It's probably all made in Croydon, but it is um, terribly nice and often very interesting. And they have really pretty cans, which is not a, a phrase you can usually say on a Christian podcast. So wait, I'm going to taste this. It's fruity. It tastes, you know, red. <laughs> that's what it tastes like it tastes like it's got that kind of like ruby glow you know i have no idea if it does because it's kind of dark in here um but uh yeah that's a very nice beer and i like it very much and that's the point is i think my attitude to beer is what my attitude to faith has become which is i really like beer um I'm not going to get all hardcore with people if they don't drink the right beer. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that I know enough about it to really enforce that. I do know that some beer is probably a lot nicer than other beer. And um, I also think there are, you know, ways to drink it and excesses that we can go to. And I'd like us to be a little bit more chilled out about beer. I'd like us to be a little bit more open and welcoming to people who are new to it or people who have different tastes from our own. Um, I would like us to to ultimately allow more people to get an accurate picture of what beer is so that it can find its way into their hearts and they can accept it as their personal lord. No, wait a minute. I think I've taken the metaphor too far. Anyway, the point is there will be cool stuff in this podcast. Uh, there's going to be, generally speaking, I think the format we're going to take is we're going to be going into a pub uh, with myself and a few of my friends. Um, you will hear ordinary pub noises or bar noises or wherever people drink. You know, we may drink by the river. You know, we may drink in a car park. You know, these are traditional places to drink. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be uh, discussing things of faith, uh, things that should be concerning to people of faith. So in episode two, for instance, which we're titling Genesis, because I'm drinking beer and my friend Laura is uh, drinking gin. Um, we talk about Extinction Rebellion. Uh, we talk about Greenbelt Festival, which is a progressive Christian festival, which, you know, sometimes irritates me, but most of the time is genuinely gorgeous and beautiful and exactly what these events should be like and is, I, I think, a beautiful, uh, I don't know, reflection of what the church can be and should be in the world and uh, yeah, it has, I don't know, man, it has a, it has a center heaven about it. Uh, and I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I'm not a hippie. I am, I, I'm an aggressive individual who, you know, goes to Hillsong. I'm one of those guys, but you know, I do really love that festival. So we're going to be talking a little bit about that because Laura had never been before. And she got to hear people like Nadia Bowles Weber. Uh, that was really, very cool. She got to hang out with Extinction Rebellion. And we talk a little bit about what the purpose is of an organization like that, what it's like to go to one of their uh, meetings, and also um, just why Christians should actually give a rat's ass about the environment and about activist organizations like that. So you got a 42-year-old, that's me, and you got a 24-year-old, that's her. We'll be talking about it in episode two, which is really our first kind of proper episode. Um, and there's also an interview with Harry and Chris, who, if you don't know them, you should do some pre listening so that then you can be super excited about hearing them. Uh, peppered through the, um, I think it's about an hour and five minutes long. It's long, I know, but if you've got to commute, that's kind of cool, right? Or if you want to have a long bath, or if you don't want to listen to it all. Uh, yeah, there's kind of three sections in there. 
and it will be uh, me talking again all of the audio stuff on this i recorded just to take notes so future episodes will have better audio but um yeah uh, talking to them about their recent foray into america and trying to break america what that was like um and what it's like to be christian comics christian uh comic singers and artists and um, advice for aspiring artists of all kinds as well so they're very cool guys uh, they're very funny and it's a fun interview, as is the conversation with Laura. So if you want to hear two people getting, not, I'm not going to say hammered, I'm just going to say progressively more tipsy, because I believe that's a Christian way of experiencing it. I'm not drunk, I'm mellow. I'm so mellow, I can I can see my words. Um, I'm not that mellow at all, but I am going to have another sip of these. Mm. These guys, that's very good. Freak Aleworks from Aldi. Uh, for the discerning beer drinker, <laughs> just picturing genuine beer people coming to this podcast and going like, why is he doing this? Because it's quite nice. Um, but do feel free to email beerchristianity at yahoo.co.uk if you have, um, you know, music that you'd like us to play or to consider playing or people who you think I should interview or beers that you think I should drink, places that you think I should drink. Um, I think that'll be pretty cool. Uh, other interviews that we've got in the can, um, I'm trying to get permission to use an interview I did with the Archbishop of Canterbury because that is Bantz. It is the Archbishop of Banterbury, not my joke, but I do like it, uh, who was such a nice guy and so smart and so very reasonable. I was talking to him mostly about the World Church. It's an interview I'm doing for a magazine I edit and for um, the Baptist Times online. And so it'll be going into those places anyway. But if you wanted to hear the interview in its full glory, as well as one other one that I did at, um, what you might call it, at Greenville Festival, then you can uh, catch episode, um, I don't know what episodes it's going to be on, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it'll be there. Basically, I just want to share some of the cool stuff that um, I've done in terms of, well, that's, <laughs> that's I'm sorry. Guys, I just want you to know how cool I am. Um, uh, I want to share some of the cool people who I've interacted with and the cool ideas that have um, influenced me. So if I can find the old interviews that I did with Richard Rohr, if you're a fan of Richard Rohr, I've got some great interviews with him. Um, I've got an interview with Noam Chomsky. That was very cool. And I spoke to him a little bit about faith. I've even got old Kale Larson, who I mentioned in a particularly name droppy and uh, pretentious section of episode two. I've got, yeah, I don't know. In fact, if I'm honest, I would love to play you something now because you've gone to all the trouble of listening to this thing and it's, you know, several minutes long and it just seems right that, you know, I give you something worth listening to. So I had a search for Richard Ross. This is the magic of radio slash podcasting. Uh, I have, <laughs> I've dug out um, a, a power cable for an old laptop so that I could fire it up so that I could um, uh, find some of my old stuff. I tell you this mainly because it was amusing because I forgot to feed my wife uh, because I had cooked something and just kind of left it in the oven and I got totally distracted. Uh, so that is cool, but also not as cool as interviewing Noam Chomsky when you have uh, just been in a hot tub that you owned for about two years, one of those inflatable ones, not a cool one and drinking beer. Uh, so this is perfect. And talking to him about just a whole bunch of stuff. Um, yeah, for a magazine that I was editing at the time uh, for Baptist Christians in the UK. And he was very cool, as you can imagine. Noam Chomsky, if you haven't read him or listened to his talks, you really need to get into him. The Is he the most influential? I don't know, one of the most influential intellectuals of the 20th century. And I'm terrified about what's going to happen when he dies because he's so smart and so right about so many things. So, uh, yeah, Chomsky, a sweetheart. I found an interview with him and I'll play you a bit of it now just so it feels like there's, you know, something worthwhile in this. You're not going to get the full beer Christianity experience because you're not going to have a bunch of people kind of just shooting the breeze, uh, but you can get some of it in the form of this interview. Also, it turns out that um, Christian nationalism has not gone away in the time since I interviewed him several years ago, which is deeply, deeply depressing. We see the rise of Donald Trump. We see the rise of the MAGA hat being worn by the Christian, which 
I mean, I'm not a theologian. I'm not going to say it's the abomination that causes desolation because I think it's a big statement, but I would say it is an abomination and I don't get it. So, yeah, weird. Anyway, here's Noam Chomsky, who is uh, not, as far as I know, a Christian, uh, but is a very, very smart man. Hello. Hi, Professor Chomsky. Yes, speaking. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to me. I really appreciate it. Um, uh, just to give you a little bit of context, uh, the topic is generally on borders and nationhood in the context of immigration, uh, the perceived EU, uh, EU migration crisis, um, and uh, yeah, that sort of thing. Uh, okay. so, um, I'm running for a, uh, a, a Christian audience here. From your knowledge of Christianity, um, does it seem like Christianity should be a religion that promotes internationalism, considering that it has um, this idea of being a universal religion? Um, and and if so, what do you make of uh, kind of Christian nationalism? Well, well uh, there's no kind of nationalism that I'm particularly sympathetic to, although, as I say, I think people have a, both a right to have a right to maintain their own uh, cultures and national identities without conflict and without violence, without infringing on others. Christianity can Christianity can be many different things, and in its 2,000-year uh, history, in fact, it has been many very different things. Uh, even in recent years, uh, Christianity has uh, taken many different forms. So, for example, when uh, uh, under Vatican II, uh, the Catholic Church turned, basically returned to the lessons of the Gospels, which kind of radical pacifist and had, a, a in my view, an extremely beneficial uh, impact on large parts of Latin America. It frightened the power. In fact, the United States officially takes credit for having helped destroy liberation theology officially. It's in the, uh, I'll give you the details if you like. But it was a very positive force now being revived to a certain extent by Pope Francis. Uh, on the other hand, uh, 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 George Bush and Tony Blair appealed to uh, Christian values when they carried out the worst crime of this century, invading Iraq. In fact, George Bush... Uh, declared that he was doing it at the command of his Lord. Uh, well, that's another form of Christianity. Mm, absolutely. Um, uh, a final question. Um, the rise of um, certain worrying trends of um, right-wing nationalism in Europe and uh, in North America, um, a lot of Western democracies seem to think that they're immune to a kind of ultra-nationalist nightmare um, like we saw in the uh, mid-20th century. Would you say they're right in being dismissive of that danger? No, I don't think. I, I certainly would not. In fact, it's not just right now. About 15 years ago, I, in a book, I happened to quote uh, an article by a leading historian of modern Germany, uh, Fritz Stern, uh, who was a refugee from Germany, fled in the 1930s to the United States, became a very prominent historian of Germany. He wrote an article in the leading establishment journal, Foreign Affairs, uh, called, uh, in which it was about Germany's descent into barbarism, the transition of Germany from the peak of Western civilization in uh, the 1920s to perhaps the depths of human history in the 1930s. But it's, it's an article that's worth reading because as he made it very explicit, he said, in fact said, I now fear for the country that gave me refuge from Nazi Germany. And in fact, right through the article, it's every reference is... Uh, 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 is a reference often not so oblique to developments taking place in the United States. He's not saying that the United States is Weimar Germany, but he's saying there are things we ought to be wary about, and in Europe even more so, very much more so, in the rise of the ultranationalist parties throughout Europe. 
a very frightening phenomenon. This is not ancient history. Actually, I'm old enough to remember it personally. That is Noam Chomsky talking to me in 2016. It is now 2019. It is, what, September, October, around there. And yeah, it's got much worse in the States, I think. I think we can all agree. I think it's got much worse a, a lot of places. You've got the Amazon burning because of a far-right politician basically allowing it and encouraging it and stoking it uh, in order to make way for developments in terms of farming and in terms of uh, infrastructure coming in and getting indigenous people off their lands and getting rainforest clears so we can you know make some money off of the earth uh yeah and you've obviously got president trump doing his thing with his guys beating up people and yeah it's all just a little bit horrifying and uh yeah chomsky talking about it then obviously uh and i just i find it troubling and i think it's something we need to pray for i think I keep on hearing this. Uh, Boris Johnson just, you know, got into power in the UK. And I hear a lot of Christians going, well, you know, instead of complaining about him, maybe you should be a good Christian and you should pray for him. And I think that's cool. I think if you are going to be doing the same kind of rhetoric, if uh, Jeremy Corbyn gets in, and if you did the same kind of rhetoric about Obama or freaking Clinton even, and these are hardly left-wing people, um, if you can find it in your heart for them, then I guess, yeah, I take you seriously. If, however, you only think we need to just accept it, that God puts his leaders into place, when it's the leaders you like, uh, your opinion is, well, it's it's hard to respect. Let's put it that way, when it's, when it's that kind of relative. Myself, I think, yeah, we probably need to pray for them all the time. I think most of them are probably not awful, awful people, but but there are some who are. And I think we also need to remember that we as Christians have a responsibility to get involved in society. We do not get to be apolitical. We do not get to pretend that we're above all of that. If we care about our fellow human beings, if we care about the stewardship God has placed in our hands of humans and of our planet, then we have to get involved. And I think personally, the Christian distinctive is to stand against hatred and against power not maybe not all power we'll address that in another podcast anyway that got super heavy point is chomsky on beer christianity whoop whoop uh yeah also this freak ills ill works is going down just a treat mm. and make me feel very kind of enthusiastic about the future so that's nice basically the future of this podcast because i think it could be quite cool so if there's anything that you would like to hear please email uh, beerchristianity at yahoo.co.uk and if you have any thoughts on it uh, you know if they're not too brutal uh, then do share them uh, there's loads of cool stuff uh, and also just some very cool music and theater and movies and whatever we're going to be doing a little bit of review we're going to be doing a little bit of politics a little bit of theology or uh, theology sounds really overblown i'm not a theologian i studied philosophy uh, I didn't finish my master's. I am not a particularly educated person, but by God, Persian, but by God, I have some opinions. And so uh, we'll kind of be looking into those. I also have some very funny friends who will be significantly more entertaining uh, than I am on this very quiet podcast. I have to say, episode two, guys, the, the, the music in the background is often quite loud and you know i want to apologize in advance but it's a super fun podcast and uh the super fun podcast super fun episode super fun episode and the interview with harry and chris is just delightful because of them not me uh though chris does at one point uh wash one of my feet which is a delight um yeah i think that's mostly what you need to know uh, if you subscribe to this, I, I looked at some advice kind of videos and stuff like that on doing a podcast when I wanted to do this or redo this. And the um, the advice was, don't ask people to listen to your podcast or tell their friends. That means nothing. You need to get them to subscribe. So, hey, would you subscribe to this podcast, please? That would be grand. And do email and tell me what you thought and give me some suggestions, that would be Radsky. And I will see you at episode two. So 
Um, only remains for me to say that uh, Tusca Lanka does not sponsor this show, but gosh, it would be lovely if they did. And um, I wanted to be a little bit nerdy about beer, and so I um, checked out their Wikipedia page, and they say that it's owned by East African Breweries, which is an imprint of Diageo, which is unfortunate. Uh, it was set up in 1922. Uh, I just know it as that beer that you drink when you're in Kenya, and it's just super great, a little bit sweet, and really lovely. Um, the um, what do you call that stuff? The slogan on the back of the t-shirt I owned uh, of Tusker, because I like it that much, was Bada Yakazi, uh, which means for after work, <laughs> which I think is a very responsible attitude to beer, um, uh, if if not super fun, because, hey, you know, it's always 10 a.m. somewhere. Um, but there's also, they have a new one now, which I can't pronounce because... Um, I'm going to say because I've had a few beers and also because I don't want to be accused of either cultural insensitivity or cultural appropriation, but it means my beer, my country, which, you know, (laughs) could be taken kind of MAGA, I know that. Anyway, so that's the end of episode one, just to tell you basically what this podcast is going to be about, love it if you could spread the word, love it if you could subscribe, but really you haven't heard what it's mostly about until uh, you listen to episode two which is quite a commitment, I understand. Or you can just skip through them, because who knows when you're getting to this. It's the internet. It's forever. I hope you have a delightful day slash evening slash commute wherever you're listening to this. And thank you so much for listening.